Yo, yo, yo! It's Tony the Soy Sasa Sasa, and what's up? Welcome to another episode of Cigar Review. And today we are doing the Patina Oro de Nicaraguan Robusto. This came out a little bit while back, and um, I I'm not a particular big fan of Patina. Not because it's bad. I'm just not connected to it. You know, it's not mentally or uh, emotionally connected to the cigar, so I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, they do have some good cigars, but like, you know, because you're not emotionally connected, you're not like that excited about it, right? But this one did come out, and I was like, you know what? I'll try it, I'll review it, and see how that goes because it is Nicaraguan, you know? Um, but turns out it wasn't really Nicaraguan, so I, I don't know, it's just made in Nicaragua. That's pretty much it. So, you know, I'm, you know, I got the cigar. And I'm gonna give it a try. It's very oily, very like greasy, oily cigar. It, it's yeah, look at this. It's let's look at the cigar first. Martina Oro de Nicaragua. Size is Robusto 5x54. MSRP is $13 in a box of 20. Uses Ecuadorian Habano Escura wrapper. Ecuadorian Sumatra binder and then uses Nicaraguan and Connecticut broadleaf as filler which is very confusing because if you want to say gold of Nicaraguan you use Ecuadorian Habano all right shouldn't the name doesn't always match the cigar so I'm just gonna ignore that for now all right now that we saw the cigar it's time to smoke the cigar New setup on the table. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to it. I don't have enough spit. What does that mean? What? <laughs> See it's on water. Try again. There we go. Been using this free cutter for a while now. It's actually useful. All right, call draw. A very leathery, woodsy note. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm like puffing on a belt, like a leather belt. All right, let's light it up. Okay, took a little bit. Oh. Oh, it whistles. That means this hole somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. 
Oh, the pepper. <laughs> All right, let's get to the notes. The draw is horrible because I know there's a hole somewhere. It's whistling. Mm -mm. Where is it? It's like um, chocolate espresso with the note with some bitterness. And I know that the bitterness came from the burn for sure. There's a little bit of hay as well. And a little bit of sweetness on underneath all that stuff. I'm pretty sure once I figure out where that hole is and plugged it up, it's going to taste better. So yeah, let me get one third. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm on first third. You see the bands off because I had to do a little bit convincing to get the cigar to burn. The cigar had a little bit of construction issue, but you know which cigar doesn't. So um, I did a little convincing with you know my usual tool, right? You can see that there's still that this thing, which is see that there's one little vein that just don't want to go anywhere and I cannot get it out. So, but after I did some convincing, smoke started to get through a little bit more. It's a better cigar. Like, you know, a lot of um, people are complaining. It's like, hey, Tony, why do you have to hold the vein out and stand out? That? Like, when you fix a cigar, when a cigar has a good draw, it can go from a bad cigar to a great cigar. I'm helping you to have the best opportunity to get a great cigar. And they go, why do you have to talk about it then? Just, you know, pull it out and start smoking. I don't have to talk about the thing. But that's part of the construction issue. And I hope that, you know, by uh, showing that I pulled out a large vein or a stem or whatever you want to call it, that tells the manufacturers that, hey, you need to do a better job checking it. Uh, you need to do a better job, you know, draw test it and all that stuff. So I think it's important. Yeah, I know that it does hurt the the image of the brand sometimes but sometimes you have to tell that and then hopefully the brand will eventually get a win of it and they go you know what let me go check the factory and say hey you know you guys gotta do a better job removing the veins that's it right anyways the cigar got better and it went from woodsy uh and peppery to woodsy peppery chocolatey and syrupy uh it tastes like some sort of sweet syrup Sweet, some sort of vanilla, maple, syrupy taste. And it's a little bit creamy as well. So that's what I got for the first third. And obviously I'll continue working on it. Hopefully that vein disappears somewhere. Or I can reverse pull it out. I don't know. But right now, it's still giving me some burn issues. I'm going to try to, you know, my best to give the best chance possible to do that. And, you know, hopefully it'll get there. But while I'm at it, I'll remove the band. So here we go. Or the Nicaragua. There we go. Nice band. Floral and, you know, gold and red. Really catches the eyes, right? And obviously, I don't know why people like tend to use the red color for Nicaragua. But that's totally fine. It's either red or blue. But yeah. Away from their typical coloring. I think that's a good way to kind of get attention. Because if you have a standard of way of like your branding it's always a certain color and also you change color boom it stands out right so this one stands out it's pretty nice so that's why we're band we gotta go to the second third we'll be right back okay second third um that sweetness is more pronounced from the retro hill so if you don't retro hill you can miss a big part of the flavor the palette part of it Still kind of sweet. Still try to bring that little bit of toasty coffee bean kind of taste. Yet yeah, it's starting to turn a little bit earthy. So woodsy, earthy, smokiness, 
lot of sweetness from the retro hill. It it's kind of nice, but yet confusing. And I like how there is a uh, like a, like a transition between the first third and second third. Uh, even though I'm not too sure, it's because it starts to open up and be able to smoke it, or because it's transitioning. But it's nice so far, so good. Strength about let's say medium. I think that's uh, strength about medium. But the body of the smoke, um, for this one, I'm gonna say about mile plus to medium. So you can taste it, but like it goes away quick. There also another note in there. It's kind of like hay, but not hay. Like in between. It's like it's not really recognizable, but it's kind of pleasant. So far, so good. I, I mean, you know, aside from construction issue, the cigar itself is relatively enjoyable. It's not really like, you know, when it's a goal of Nicaragua, uh, but like it it doesn't shine like a Nicaraguan cigar. It's more of a different take on it. So like if you're looking for like oh Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan, I, I don't think this is it. But if you're looking for something like has that hint of Nicaraguan but sweet and something else, this is it. So yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad cigar. If I just wished mine was uh, was better constructed. Maybe in the future I will revisit this cigar, but I, I wish it was uh, like there was no issue with the construction. I can really tell the flavor. And I really feel like I already passed that part that has an issue because right now the smoke is fine. Burn is relatively fine. It's a little bit wonky here and there, but the burn is relatively fine. But I do like that sweetness though. There is a, a good amount of sweetness here that kind of balance out the cigar. So last there. We'll be right back. All right, last third, as you can see, that stem is there. I didn't, I didn't peel it up or anything. That just burns out. You can tell, like the whole time it's pushing against the cigar. It's not. It's not. It doesn't wanna see. Yeah. Build quality is not very good, but the cigar itself is not bad. Last third, it got more leathery. So leathery woodsiness and that sweetness still there. So it's actually quite pleasant. I mean, I think I, a lot of people can can enjoy this. I probably have to revisit this cigar, and I think there there is uh, it warrants it because uh, I think the cigar could be even better if uh, there was no burn issue or draw issue and all that stuff. So I give the cigar right now with the draw issue. uh 11 12 dollars 11 to 12 dollars yeah it's got that flavor it's got that boutique characteristic of being different try to do transitions and try different things i i think that's what the to, uh you know 12 dollars at least i think the msrp is like 13 13. it's not too far i think that if this whole thing burns perfectly and give him a little bit more uh of that note of all the notes and a little bit more balanced uh it will be a 13 dollars so yeah this thing is worth these price that they're charging for just a little problem here and there i probably will have to uh yeah revisit this cigar because it, i i feel like it could be it could be really good it could be really good all right so yeah um go try one it's not very expensive for a boutique cigar and it's got quite a bit of flavor now i smoke a robusto i don't know any other size will happen different but Robusto is a perfect size. Uh, the smoke time is about, uh, yeah, hour and 10 minutes. So it's not too short. Overall, tastes good. So, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this cigar. So that will be it for this cigar review. If you like it, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and join our memberships. Uh, I continue to, you know, push out all the backlog of reviews that I'm doing. So, you know, if you join the membership right now, you get to, review, uh, you get to see them first, right? And I have a few more cigars coming in. I try to review all the ones, the new ones first. And then whenever I kind of get bored of the new ones, I go back to the old ones. All right. So that will be it. And I'll see you guys next one. Bye, guys.